What's up, guys? All right, we're going to do Mookie Betts' swing. And uh, before I do, it's I think it's important to understand that I come at this uh, swing mechanics as uh, seeing it much differently than I think most hitting coaches, swing coaches see it. In that I believe that there's really just one thing that separates a great swing from an average swing or a poor swing. There's one thing that really matters. And uh, and the way that we're approaching the swing now, because we don't see this one way, we overcomplicate it and the swing becomes very stiff and robotic. Uh, another way to say that, I guess, would be I think that swing mechanics, 95% of it comes down to one simple concept. And that concept is what I would refer to as lead arm dominance. But that gets kind of misconstrued. People think that what I'm saying is the, the lead arm contributes more. It's not necessarily that. It's that when developing your swing, you go through a process of honing your swing that you're going to use for your basically your lifetime. You, you choose your mechanics. And oftentimes, this is an unconscious sort of process. We don't really say, I would like these mechanics or I would like those. We're, it's just developing. And it just so happens that the baseball swing works better when your back arm is not capable, basically, when you're developing your swing. So that's a different thing than saying your back arm contributes more, should contribute more or less in the swing or your lead arm should contribute more or less in the swing. Um, it's just saying that we need to develop a structure to your swing that would emulate or simulate the process you would go through if your back arm wasn't as capable. And I have a way to do that process. I call it the lead arm progression. It's a three-step process. You can read about it in my book, Swing Like Griffey. But I think the important thing is that it's, it's not what a lot of people are saying uh, or thinking it is, which is, that your lead arm contributes more. It's just talking about the structure that develops in in your swing, um, and so and what matters in that structure when you're developing it is how capable your back arm is. If it's very capable, typically you're going to want to uh, push outward, and when you do, it changes the whole structure of your swing. If the back arm is less capable, what happens is the body has to kind of pull the front arm. It's more of that kind of motion. Um, so the body kind of takes over for what the back arm can't do. Um, and this happens to be a good thing. I've said it before. I don't know. There could be another sport out there where this is not important, where leaning towards what I would call lead arm dominance is really not important. It just so happens that in baseball, it is. Um, it helps you more consistently square up the barrel. And so what I recommend for everyone, even if you think of yourself as a slap hitter, there's no harm ever in just delivering more force to the ball on a more consistent basis. So I advise everyone, no matter what your size, to just lean more towards what I would call this lead arm dominance. And again, you can read about how to do that in my... Uh, newest ebook, Swing Like Griffey at theswingmechanic.com. Um, so let's get into Mookie Betts. Now that you know what sort of angle I'm coming at this with, um, that may not be what you agree with in the swing. But that's, <clears throat> I just want to be up front that everything I see in swing mechanics, I'm looking for signs of lead arm dominance and I'm looking for signs of how they can possibly move more towards a lead arm dominant structure to the swing. <clears throat> um, and there aren't hard and fast rules when you look at uh, when you look at hitters 
um, who are exemplifying lead arm dominance. Some mo it it's just a tendency. They will tend towards certain positions, and then you can say, ah, that's a sign of lead arm dominance. That's a sign of lead arm dominance. But it doesn't mean every position they have is going to be um, consistent with what you tend to see in lead arm dominant swings. Um, but what you will tend to see overall are things like uh, a dropping of the barrel early in the swing. This is a sign that the back arm is, you've developed a structure in which the back arm is not pushing outward. Um, and also a very connected position at contact. Those are two. Um, of the usually the most distinguished traits of lead arm dominance. But again, you, this is why the lead arm progression is so important. You find your own way to swing um, in your own lead arm dominant action. I mean, it might differ in, in many ways from the way other people do it. Some people have a very straight lead arm. Some people have a very bent straight arm, uh, lead arm. And... We're going to see Mookie Betts as a very bent one, but it, that's just the way he does lead arm dominance. Um, and you have to find your own way to do it. So as we look at his stats, Mookie Betts is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound hitters of all time. He weighs 180, 185, and uh, is tearing it up this year. Uh, but really has consistently produced quite a bit of power for a guy his size, and that puts him on 93rd currently on the pound-for-pound pound list. Um, also, tremendous batting average. I mean, basically, he's just a guy who's consistently hitting the ball with force um, and a lot of force per pound of body weight. So let's take a look at his swing here. As you can see, the way he does lead arm dominance, it's a little different. Notice the lead arm is getting away from the body. Um... Uh, this is more of a the way right-handers tend to do lead arm dominance. They don't tend to be just they tend to get that that lead arm a little bit more away from their body. Uh, but you'll see this in lefties too. Um, notice the very connected position here at contact. But let's take it back, and you can see here the barrel is dropping, and he is more pulling the bat from a structural standpoint. In other words, you have to think of it as when he was learning the swing, there was more pull and um, maybe a less capable, less coordinated uh, back arm. And this happens a lot of, of times in hitters who start swinging very young uh, because um, the back arm, both arms just aren't that strong. So they end up defaulting to more of a lead arm dominant action because the lead arm dominant action actually is more efficient. Um, it's better if you only have one arm to use that arm as your lead arm. The reason being is the lead arm by itself will tend to catch sort of a free ride from the rotating torso. There's a lot of mass behind it. And so the, it can be more body controlled. Uh, whereas the back arm has nothing behind it. And really the best thing it can do is kind of fire outward. Um, so Mookie Betts, uh, like I said, develops a, a lead arm dominant action but doing so a little differently in the in that the lead arm is not really compressed up against his chest this is again this is fine if you swing with just your lead arm and you find that this is what you want to do that's probably the right action for you and the most telling positions i would say of mookie bets that he's in a lead arm dominant action is his very connected position uh, at contact consistently gets into a very connected position at contact um, and then the back arm is not really extending fully until very late in the swing, until about here. Most guys who are very back arm dominant in their structure would be extending through contact, and their back arm would be basically ex extended here. Um, when you have more of a lead arm dominant action, it's more of a rotation through the hit. This is a big reason for the rotational movement of the early 2000s. They saw that guys needed more rotation in the swing. There was too much extension, of, and it was just an armsy, slappy swing. They saw the right thing. They were on the right track. I almost feel like that's the very beginning of an upward movement in really starting to, to figure out the swing in swing instruction. But 
the problem was they were identifying something um, in uh, the need for more rotation that can't be separated from how much your back arm is exerting. So the more that your back arm exerts, you're not going to be able to rotate. Um, and I'm, again, I'm talking structure here, the structure of the swing. When you're developing your swing, the more that the back arm learns to exert, <clears throat> the less your body can learn to rotate through the hit. Um, his back arm, Mookie's back arm, is not one that was developed uh, in a state where it could exert very much or wanted to exert very much and so therefore he took on more of this rotation through the hit um, there's a lot of leaning back in today's swing um, I think that players would maybe do a little bit better to at least try to be more erect in your spine angle at this point um, in the swing that's more of what you'll tend to see from guys from um, I would say the home run hitters of maybe the 80s and, and back, they, they tended to more be integral in their body positioning as from this point of view and kind of go ahead and like put the body into the hit more. Um, today's hitters, it's just kind of a style, um, and I think it's a style that, that hurts more than anything, but the style is to just lean back a lot. Uh, so Mike Schmidt, I think Schmidt had a very similar swing to Betts. Their, their lead arm didn't compress all that much up against their chest, but very much of a dropping action of the barrel, uh, at this point tells me that it's still in the structure of lead arm dominance. And then he achieved a very connected position here. You can see there at contact, very similar to Betts's position. Um, what Schmidt did is he just halted his rotation shortly after contact. And so he had this cutoff sort of finish. But um, Oscar Gamble had a little bit of that too, where they just, they kind of stopped their rotation through contact, which is fine because they're lead arm dominant all the way up to it. Um, and And you can see, again, how straight up and down you can, the line on his jersey helps you see that. He's completely straight up and down, and I just think that that delivers a little bit more force into the ball than, than leaning back. Plus, leaning back will tend to make you want to use your arms more um, and kind of push out more because you are leaning back. They kind of go hand in hand. But here's the positioning that is very similar between Betts and Schmidt. Schmidt is a, uh, I believe he's number 10 on the pound-for-pound pound list. Betts is 93. Um, when you look at the big picture, those are basically two guys who are right next to each other in terms of pound for pound, um, clout, really. These guys are elite pound for pound guys. And that's why I developed the pound for pound list is because we need some sort of structure to say, Hey, we're starting to see the pattern increase as we move up this list. And I think that you have to rate guys on pound for pound basis, uh, because then you, you not only... Um, you know, you just have a better picture. You're not looking at someone who's like 6'5", 250, and equating him uh, pound for pound with guys who are like possibly producing the same amount at 180, 190, the same amount of consistent power. So I developed the pound for pound equation. You can get that complete list when you order uh, the Swing Like Griffey ebook. So... I also wanted to compare Betts to Reggie Smith, who I think is one of the most underrated hitters. Definitely a pound-for-pound pound great. I think he's in the 123 range. And he had a bit more of a straight lead arm. This is how he did lead arm dominance when he was developing his swing. That's okay. This is how his particular lead arm dominant action developed. Um, you can see... Watch how this is a good video for showing how when the back arm doesn't overexert. Most people from this point want to just extend the back arm. That's too early. That's too being too arm dominant. It's being too back arm dominant, and it's not a good structure. Watch how just 
keeping the back arm loose and not overexerting it, and rather just rotating at this point, allows the barrel to whip into the zone. If you're extending hard that back elbow at this point, the barrel's going to actually slow down and hang back a little bit. But watch how, because he doesn't overexert the back arm, look at the barrel just whip into the zone. And he achieves a very similar position also to Mookie Betts, where the back arm is well bent, the, fr the lead arm is a little bit away from his body, um, but you see the back arm doesn't extend until about right here. That's just typical. Again, these are positions that I don't want you guys to go out and copy. It's not necessary. It's not necessary to, to approach the swing that way. I know that that's the way instruction has been doing it, uh, trying to shove positions into your swing. That doesn't help. It only makes you more stiff and robotic. There has to be a way for you to, to develop the best mechanical swing and do so with a lot of fluidity and coordination. And there is no better way than the lead arm progression. So figure out how you need to swing with just your lead arm um, and go from there. You can see Smith and Schmidt were more integral, more straight up and down in that spine angle. There's a little bit of leaning. Um, there's still a little bit of leaning back here, and possibly that's something that he, maybe would have been better for him to lean forward a little bit more, possibly not. But um, again, the key is, what does he want to swing like with just his lead arm? I think you all need to really get to know that in yourself. Um, and that's why I, I, you know, I do favor a bit of a weight shift, but just because when you swing with just your lead arm, you tend to want to have a little bit of a weight shift. You tend to want to use your body more. And here you can see a, a good amount of weight shift from Babe Ruth. Um, Ruth had a little bit more compression than, than I would say Betts has. Uh, but look at how much the, the, the barrel drops and the hands drop. Just telling you that gravity is very um, influential in his swing at this point, which is what you want. You want to actually borrow from gravity um, at the early stage of the swing. And you're going to use that energy to then whip the bat into the zone. We don't have enough whip in the swing because we're not really using our body correctly these days in today's popular swing. Here you can see a beautiful connected position at contact. To me, this is the best swing ever caught on video. It just so happens that it's his 60th home run, I believe. I think there's a consensus that that is the case. Funny. It's, it's really probably the best mechanical swing I've, I've seen on video. Um, the, the positioning here at contact is just so spot on. Uh, the back arm is loose. You can see the back uh, shoulder is away from his chin. A lot of times guys will, will get that back shoulder kind of shoving up against their chin. They're getting a little tight. The swing is not as loose as it could be. His back arm just didn't overexert too much when he was learning his swing. Um, it helped that he wrote with his right arm. He probably did other things with his right arm as well. Um, and you can see the late extension, just like the other guys that we've seen, that late extension of the back arm, which is just an indication of a lead arm dominant structure. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Check out my website, theswingmechanic.com. You can also get the lead arm training bat there. Um, I appreciate everyone's support. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with a friend. Thank you guys very much. Take care.